This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen Dr. Caligari, a medical horror fantasy from Stephen Syadian, made back in 1989. As the title suggests, it's a sequel to the silent film, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, following his granddaughter of the same name, and her own experiments into the capabilities of the human mind. The story starts with Mrs. Van Houten, a housewife whose nymphomaniac tendencies and hallucinations have led to her reincarceration at Caligari's Asylum, an event which disturbs two other doctors who are concerned with Caligari's experiments. As they attempt to have an investigation approved, Caligari's interviews, experiments, and other uncouth and illegal practices on other inmates eventually culminate in her greatest plan, which I won't ruin here or else you won't watch the movie. Then again, this may not be up your alley. The film is incredibly minimalist and stylized, perhaps far more than either of the director's other films that I've seen in the past. Much of the movie is shot on an all-black soundstage with the bare essentials for a scene, often using bright lights or colors to separate any important elements from the background, or in some cases having nothing at all outside of the actors. Cinematography is also excessively stylized, keeping to static shots at sometimes extreme angles, capturing whole takes with little editing. It's pretty evident that this stylistic choice is in homage to the original silent film, which also made use of an exaggerated and expressionistic artistic presentation for its set pieces. Though here, it takes the painted shadows and abstract architecture and pushes it to an entirely new level, one that's almost entirely focused on the image and what is seen, and not necessarily on anything else. That's not to say that the movie is entirely visual, of course, but it's an aspect that is emphasized almost as soon as the story begins, remaining constant and consistent throughout its runtime. It's pretty much one of the primary talking points here because of how much of the movie is its style, if that makes sense. The stylistic choices extend further into the story and its presentation. It's easy enough to understand what is going on within a scene, but the way in which dialogue is delivered is far from traditional. There are more than enough line deliveries that are deliberately stilted, with more focus on enunciation than emotion, as if to make sure that what is being said can be heard. Then again, what is being said is in itself abstract and surreal, either to illustrate the madness of characters, or to create some one-liners to be memorized and quoted later. It's another minimalist approach that even affects how the actors move, either keeping completely still as they project their lines forward, or moving and turning within a shot at extreme angles. Either way, it's probably the next most obvious element of the film's style. As for the actual meat of the story, it ends up becoming incidental and unimportant. It's not entirely absent, of course, but it's more that the story isn't as much a narrative to be shared, but more of a platform for the imagery to use. It's as if the filmmakers wanted to make something to see how unusual or outrageous their visuals could be. Or, perhaps more likely, it's meant to be a sort of accessible film for Sayadian, given his history with, uh, adult features. It could also be both, with the director wanting to make a movie that removed anything explicit, then went ahead and removed everything that was unnecessary for the story he wanted to tell. All I know is that the end result is extremely unique, 
and it's likely that the audience for this movie is just as rare. Thankfully, I'm part of that audience. Well, I hope it's a good thing, anyways. Dr. Caligari, Stephen Sayadian, 1989. Three and a half stars. Again, it won't be for everybody, but I would still recommend trying it out for yourself. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. And hey, if you don't like the movie, you can always turn it off. At least I hope you can. If you're stuck in a situation like mine, then I can't really help you out there. <laughs>